The latest uh, developments surrounding the conflict in uh, Nagorno-Karabakh uh, has uh, developed to uh, a full-scale uh, evacuation uh, of the entire uh, Armenian population of uh, the enclave. Um, this was a result of the Azerbaijan's uh, military uh, onslaught and uh, due to uh, clear um, imbalances in the military strength and the uh, legal issue of the involvement of the Republic of Armenia or not. Uh, the uh, the uh, Nagorno-Karabakh basically was uh, left um, uh, undefended um, because also the uh, Russian peacekeepers have uh, a different agenda, um, mainly because of the situation in uh, Ukraine. Uh, so what has happened is that um, despite um, promises of respect of human rights by uh, Baku, um, the Armenian population uh, of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh that has been there for uh, almost uh, several thousands of years, their, their presence is historic there, um, uh, there is a great feeling of mistrust. Uh, especially considering uh, images of um, uh, quite, uh, I would say, uh, gory uh, photographs uh, from the war in 2020, uh, what was called the 44-day uh, uh, war, um, where the Armenian forces in Nagorno-Karabakh tried to resist the Azeri onslaught, which, as a reminder, is the first time after the uh, 8893 um, uh, first uh, efforts to uh, gain independence or initially to join uh, Armenia. So going back to the images of 2020, uh, hostages, um, uh, quite gory images of killings and atrocities. Um, clearly, the Armenian population of Nagorno-Karabakh uh, did not trust. Uh, the promises made by uh, Azerbaijan, uh, especially as there is no guarantee of those promises, neither by Russia, which has uh, uh, basically washed its hands of the situation, uh, because Russia itself does not want to be in any conflict situation with Azerbaijan because of the importance of gas, and we will mention that in a moment. And there, there was no mention of guarantee from, uh, obviously, from Turkey, on the contrary, uh, Turkey has made now much clearer its, uh, its ambitions, its historic ambitions, saying that the road is now uh, paving uh, uh, clearer for uh, a direct connection east-west um, and hoping that they will gain a, a thin um, corridor on the southern side of the Republic of Armenia uh, in order to have a direct rail link uh, from uh, Turkey to Azerbaijan. Now, Azerbaijan doesn't really need uh, a rail link linking itself directly to Turkey, um, uh, but uh, because it already has uh, rail links uh, going northwards uh, through Georgia, and it already has its um, uh, gas pipelines uh, tap the uh, uh, pipeline, the natural gas pipeline already um, goes over uh, Georgian soil, so it goes uh, northward from uh, Azerbaijan into Georgia and then back south uh, into uh, Turkey, from where it splits up. Um, the, the various pipelines uh, ended up either in the uh, oil and gas terminal in Jehan, uh, which is on the Mediterranean, or uh, connecting to the pipeline that goes over into Greece and then in uh, Southeast uh, Europe and the Balkans. Now, uh, the situation has uh, unexpectedly for Azerbaijan um, thrown a spanner in the works of their uh, plans, simply because there has been some pressure, not too much, some pressure on Azerbaijan uh, saying that uh, the, uh, uh, the new role uh, that Baku has now acquired uh, as a new player in, in the European gas market um, should actually be uh, based on democratic values of the rest of the European Union. 
Um, now, uh, Europe, uh, mostly, especially leading up to uh, winter, which is just around the corner for Northern Europe, and uh, uh, further down uh, in a few months' time for the rest of Central Europe. Um, the, uh, the whole point is that um, Europe says that it needs Azeri uh, gas. Uh, now, Azerbaijan's gas supplies uh, is a total of around about um, 11 and a half billion cubic meters. Um, but uh, Azerbaijan wants to double that in order to uh, accommodate the demand um, from the European Union. On the other hand, Azerbaijan has another commercial obligation towards its uh, other clients, uh, customers, who are taking up uh, Azeri gas. Uh, and then there's this uh, weird situation of Azerbaijan basically violating all the European sanctions against Russia and uh, those who deal with Russia by allowing Russian gas to be pumped into the Azeri uh, pipeline and through that pipeline going uh, again westwards towards Turkey. We know Turkey's uh, situation, whereas it is, uh, uh, it is sitting on the fence of its alliance, both with Ukraine and with Russia. On the one hand, it says that it wants to be a member of, uh, uh, a leading member of NATO. It aspires to join the European Union. On the other hand, it is um, uh, showing uh, friendly relations to uh, Russia uh, because it does not want to upset uh, Moscow as a commercial partner. Uh, so this is a situation that has now evolved. And uh, all this has basically uh, moved the focus away from the humanitarian crisis, uh, which is uh, almost the entirety of Nagorno-Karabakh population being evacuated and uh, fleeing into uh, Armenia through the uh, very thin uh, and fragile uh, Lachin corridor, uh, which is towards the south of uh, the Republic of Armenia and uh, very close to the border with Iran. Um, now, uh, we have seen images of uh, highways packed with cars, buses, trucks, anything that can move uh, any uh, uh, goods, uh, people, uh, personal belongings. So basically, they're, they're, they're just abandoning a, a war situation uh, because they fear that if they stay there, then we will have the other side uh, of the coin of what is called ethnic cleansing, which is now happening uh, with a glove, uh, diplomatically, with a uh, blessing or the uh, tolerance of uh, Western uh, countries. Um, and if any Armenians stay behind in Nagorno-Karabakh, they fear that they will see ethnic cleansing in the worst kind, uh, which is uh, they fear uh, being uh, slaughtered or massacred of whoever has remained behind. Already uh, estimates are that roughly from, from 50,000 that started moving almost overnight after the Azeris made their final military push, uh, that number has already gone up to about 100,000 uh, refugees. Um, Arm the Republic of Armenia is already facing a major, major crisis as it does not have the infrastructure uh, to accommodate uh, these refugees who, uh, who are uh, of, of the same uh, uh, national and historical background. Um, and uh, they, they have... Uh, uh, relatives uh, in, in either side, so some are trying to accommodate these refugees and there's a big problem of where do you place them, once again with winter coming and uh, southern Caucasus uh, being uh, not a very friendly place uh, after uh, late October, early November. Um, so uh, the, the situation now is, is moved on from uh, what the Armenians uh, believe uh, is that they've lost their historical uh, land, which they try to regain because of uh, Soviet um, uh, divide and rule policies of the 1920s by cre creating uh, an, an Armenian autonomous zone within the territory of what was then the Azerbaijan SSR. Um, and that autonomous zone had always been sort of under the direct supervision of uh, the Soviet Union directly, 
So uh, through uh, Armenia and Yerevan, but also under Moscow directly. And Baku never really dealt with the Armenians uh, in that, uh, shall we call, enclave. Um, so, so now they're, uh, they're abandoning their historical lands, uh, been there for thousands of years. Um, there's no turning back, at least not now, because there's nobody to uh, support them or to guarantee their uh, safety and security. And uh, that is why, according to the reports, um, the last Armenians from uh, the territory of nagorno karabakh will be leaving by the end of December of 2023. So theoretically, after the 1st of January uh, 2024, uh, there will be no Armenians in uh, nagorno karabakh much to the delight of uh, Azerbaijan that has already uh, uh, done something similar with uh, a territory called Nakhichevan, which is uh, a little, well, quite a large pocket um, towards the southwest of Armenia and on the eastern border of Turkey. And there, uh, quite clearly, any trace of Armenian history or presence over the centuries has been demolished or raised to the ground. So that is quite possibly what will happen again in Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, there is uh, quite a ferocity within the population of uh, Azerbaijan to uh, uh, remove any uh, uh, trace of the Armenians being there historically. So that is what we will see happening very soon. Uh, unless, of course, a small pocket of population remains, but in any case, um, that will be uh, growing smaller and smaller and smaller by the day, uh, shrinking, um, and only if there's a very small number of people remaining for whichever reasons. Uh, which frankly would be foolish, uh, considering uh, Azerbaijan's uh, historic past with the Armenians in general. So the only people that have remained behind now are uh, 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 government officials, uh, security personnel, meaning police, uh, health officials, the hospitals, they're looking after uh, uh, injured, the, the wounded from an explosion uh, that took place uh, a week ago. Uh, uh, which was coincidental with the whole situation and the military onslaught. And uh, that is the situation today. So this is a um, uh, historical uh, change uh, for the Armenian nation, as now it, it, it will have to focus on uh, just one issue uh, to maintain its um, uh, historical uh, demands. In the past, it had been the recognition uh, and uh, of the uh, genocide by uh, Ottoman Turkey. And on the other hand, it was uh, the um, uh, independence of Nagorno-Karabakh or union with the Republic of Armenia. A union was impossible uh, because uh, the Soviet Union and then later Russia would never allow that. Uh, it did not want in any part of its uh, sphere to allow uh, the change of uh, the sovereignty of the territory of the initial republics, the initial 15 republics of the Soviet Union, um, and what has continued after that. So uh, Russia, although it, 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 it indicated that it was an ally uh, to, to the Armenians, and it did provide or uh, intended to provide some sense of security uh, and peace um, for the population of Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, that has not happened. We have seen that. Um, and uh, that is what we are seeing now, uh, that the Armenian nation will have to uh, uh, reconsider or uh, rethink or replan its uh, purpose, um, because uh, all that is left now is the Republic of Armenia, uh, whose sovereignty does remain intact. However, there is the issue of Russia forcing Armenia to allow that narrow corridor towards the south of uh, a rail line to be built. Uh, and as I said, there, there is no commercial or uh, geostrategic importance to it. It's, it's just uh, Turkey wanting to have a direct line to uh, Azerbaijan, uh, which, which has basically no value beyond what Turkey already enjoys with Azerbaijan uh, via Georgia. So the Armenian diaspora, this is an interesting uh, aspect. 
the Armenian diaspora had been basically uh, the backbone of all the efforts uh, for um, the independence of Armenia in the late 1980s and all the struggle at the time, uh, leading up to the collapse of the Soviet Union in the uh, early 1990s, the establishment of the Republic of Armenia, and parallel to that, what do we do with the Armenian enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh? So at the time, the whole uh, uh, the, the whole aim was to unite it with Armenia, which we said it was not possible because Russia would not allow it. So plan B would have been to go uh, independent, uh, declare the uh, independent uh, Republic of Artsakh, as it is known in Armenia, the Nagorno-Karabakh uh, territory. Um, so that is now uh, no longer happening uh, because the Armenians found it very difficult uh, to have two claims internationally. One, the genocide the recognition, and two, the recognition and support to the Republic of uh, Karabakh and Artsakh. So uh, the relationship between the Republic of Armenia and uh, its diaspora will now be tested. Uh, Prime Minister Pashinyan uh, already faces quite a lot of opposition internally and externally, more so externally, uh, because the opposition voices are, are uh, greater outside of Armenia, even though within Armenia he still enjoys quite uh, popular support, uh, because most importantly, uh, a lot of people say that the, the, the collapse of the dream of Nagorno-Karabakh is not so much uh, uh, the result of uh, military or uh, strategic efforts. Uh, a lot of people within Armenia, they blame corruption uh, at all levels of uh, past administrations for the past 30 years. Uh, corruption is blamed for the incapacity of the Armenian forces. Corruption is blamed for the lack of uh, uh, purchasing uh, of an army in an arsenal that would be able to uh, defend itself against any Azeri uh, onslaught or even potential attack from Turkey, which uh, could not happen uh, because Russia has a military base within the Republic of Armenia. Uh, so in a way, uh, Russia is guaranteeing the uh, sovereignty of the Republic of Armenia alone and nothing else. So uh, this is a testing time for uh, the Republic of Armenia uh, and its prime minister. Uh, it would be interesting to see if he stays in power, if he maintains popular support. There are efforts uh, within the diaspora, as I said earlier, um, to remove him, blaming him for uh, the collapse of Nagorno-Karabakh. On the other hand, analysts say, what could he do, uh, considering that the biggest ally or or the, the, the ally that the Armenians thought uh, was their ally, in this case being Russia, uh, turned out to be not of an ally at all. It just uh, opened the doors and allowed Azerbaijan to move in uh, freely and do whatever it likes. And basically to remove this threat called uh, uh, the Republic of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh uh, as an enclave and uh, of a potential future threat of once again expanding, taking Azeri territories once again uh, to ensure um, uh, a flow or an open uh, uh, relationship between uh, the Republic of Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. So uh, basically to round it all up, it is a tragic situation. Uh, historically, um, uh, we haven't seen changes in many countries uh, to this extent of people actually being removed uh, completely. Um, the only uh, similar situation uh, is what we are still witnessing in Ukraine, where a lot of the Eastern territories of Ukraine have been invaded and occupied by Russia. Uh, there's a situation of Crimea, where uh, any Ukrainian presence has been uh, removed completely, the same way with the uh, Eastern provinces of uh, Ukraine where again, Ukrainian presence has been uh, uh, diminished and uh, removed completely. Um, ethnic Russians remain there, so uh, that is why President Putin uh, uh, was celebrating the uh, uh, accession of those territories uh, to Russia. Uh, the only other similar uh, situation is uh, in the case of the northern parts of Cyprus, 
uh, where Turkey invaded in 1974. At the time, um, interestingly enough, uh, claiming that it was a peace operation, it was claiming in 1974 that after uh, a military coup organized by the uh, junta of uh, Athens, uh, where eventually it was toppled, um, the uh, Turkey as a guarantor power, uh, guaranteeing the independence and sovereignty of the Republic of Cyprus, uh, basically invaded the northern part of the island and has occupied 37% of the land. Um, there's a small pocket of um, uh, Greek Cypriot uh, enclave, um, but the situation there is different because uh, not everybody in the north of Cyprus, mean Turkish Cypriots, or at least the Turkish Cypriot part of the population in the north of Cyprus, because there's also uh, migrant Turks. Um, the Turkish Cypriots do not seek a conflict with the uh, Greek Cypriot uh, enclave. Uh, some of whom have uh, been their friends and they've grew up, grown up together uh, over the past uh, century. So there we do see a situation uh, of uh, continued occupation and uh, uh, changing of the uh, ethnic population. Um, a lot of uh, remnants of Greek Cypriots uh, identity have been removed or destroyed uh, by Turkey in the north of Cyprus. Uh, that is continuing on a daily basis. However, nobody talks about ethnic cleansing because for some, it's a done deal. <laughs> uh, again, as, as with uh, the Azeri natural gas, nobody wants to come into conflict with Turkey uh, because of other uh, vested interests. So um, just to round up, as I said earlier, this is um, a tragic situation. Uh, there's a political situation where that only now will start evolving with what happens within the Republic of Armenia, what happens with Prime Minister Pashinyan, uh, what happens with the relationship between uh, the diaspora and the Republic of Armenia. Uh, will uh, alliances change uh, because uh, it's been mixed? Do we keep a good relationship with Russia or don't we keep a good relationship with Russia? And other people have, have been saying, no, we should turn to the West uh, and not NATO um, and uh, any alliance such as the European Union. Unfortunately, we saw what happened with Georgia. Uh, Russia did not like that. So they intervened and uh, took the uh, territories of uh, Abkhazia and Ossetia uh, in Georgia. So um, this is what we're going to see developing over the next uh, few months. Um, uh, the only fortunate outcome is that we have not seen thousands of people uh, killed on the battlefront. Um, so uh, some people uh, have stayed behind. Um, we will see what evolves in uh, the remnants of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh and what happens in the relationship of Republic of Armenia with the diaspora, relationship with the West, relationship with the European Union, relationship with Russia, and uh, the normalization of relations uh, with its four neighbors, uh, Georgia in the north, Iran in the south, Turkey to the west, and Azerbaijan to the east. And the fact that uh, Western NATO uh, and Israeli uh, influence in Azerbaijan uh, is intended basically to keep a check on Iran through the northern front. Uh, Georgia is in a sort of uh, uh, a gray zone. Uh, they don't know whether to uh, rekindle their relationship with Russia. They like the fact that they have sort of broken off uh, that uh, centuries uh, old relationship and throughout the last century of the Soviet relationship. Uh, however, uh, uh, again, the Georgians do have some difficulty uh, because all the promises that were made uh, were not delivered. So uh, Armenia is geographically in a difficult situation. Militarily, it's in a difficult situation. Economically, the only thing saving Armenia at present day is because it does not have natural resources. Uh, such as uh, natural gas or uh, any other uh, energy uh, uh, products. Uh, it does have some uh, gold mines, but those are minimal, uh, just about enough for, for the local economy and some uh, small exports. 
Uh, however, Armenia, after uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, has uh, sort of uh, evolved into a service um, economy, uh, whereas you have a lot of Russians who do not want to abandon uh, Russia altogether, uh, but do have difficulty in uh, trading with the West or maintaining the relations with the West, uh, even though they might disagree with the Putin administration. Uh, however, they don't want to abandon their country altogether. Uh, they have their businesses, they have their vested interests, they have their families. Uh, so what is happening now uh, after um, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the closing down of all borders um, uh, to the West, including Finland, um, now, Russians are turning to uh, uh, places such as Armenia, uh, setting up business there. Um, rents, the prices have gone through the roof because of great demand. The Russians moving down south. Uh, they feel they can normalize their own businesses by establishing corporations in Armenia um, and by uh, continuing to do business with uh, the rest of the world. Um, flights out of uh, Armenia are uh, now, I would say, four times more regular than they were a couple of years ago, uh, because you have several flights uh, towards any destination, um, mainly in the Middle East, uh, some to Cyprus, Greece, Southeast Europe, uh, the Balkans, uh, where there are still warm relations between the people of Armenia and the people of for example, Serbia um, and Bulgaria and uh, clearly Greece. However, that's a different story because Greece has a vested interest with the Azeri gas. So it, it, it does want to get involved, but it doesn't want to get involved. Um, so uh, things we will probably see evolving on a diplomatic and a political side, uh, not so much on a military or uh, increase in conflict. If the government of uh, Yerevan is wise enough, they will try and seek normalization of relations with uh, at least one of their four neighbors, uh, establishing better relations with Georgia uh, is easier. Um, with Iran, it's a bit complicated. Uh, with Turkey, there's the ongoing historical demand of uh, genocide recognition. And with Azerbaijan clearly being the latest conflict, there is 100% mistrust. So we don't see relations um, uh, established again, uh, at least in the near future.